This is the NRW and nerds rule the world. I'm your boy, Cool Ya P, the Adobro, the Babinka boy, the Tocino Terminator, and the Dinaguan Destroyer, you know, from the show Pal Show. And I'm here with some squad from LA to Baltimore to Northern Virginia. You ain't going to know the real logistics of where I'm at because I don't trust any of y'all. Anyway. Kuya P, I got some fam in the house. I'm going to let them all introduce themselves, and we're going to turn something from nothing. I don't even know what's up yet. My people are going to help me through this because we've been playing around with this for a couple weeks now, but we're just going to have fun because that's what this is about right now. We're living in a pandemic, y'all, so I just want to turn those frowns into smiles. So let's do this. Woo, tell them where you're from and what you're doing, man. Yo, what's going on, my friends? This is the first Rue Kage, uh, Kage Village hidden in the clout. I'm out here in sunny California. Well, maybe not t- too sunny today, but it's still pretty good weather. You know, I'm just uh, out here living my good West Coast life, doing my barber thing, being, you know, a good person, just doing my thing out here. So, you know, I'm not much to say. We're going to get more into that later on in the show. Yeah, we're going to dig in. I'm going to really scoop dig in, in, in what I do yes, with you know, some of these other interviews. We're going to have fun. Shout out to my man, mm-hmm. Rue, out there in L.A. Yo, tranquil. Girl, you know I've loved you, and, and we've been together for a long time. What's up, yo? Tell them, tell them if they don't know. You know, Tranquil, I'm here. Your first wish. The other two will come later. Um, I'm your resident Baltimorean, makeup artist, FX, voice acting, modeling. Anything you could think of artistic-wise, I'd probably dabble a little bit into. And, of course, uh, a nerd like the rest of these fools on this podcast with me. Um, but, yeah, we're going to get into it a little more later on. All right. Yo, let, we, we start now. We're going to dig in. Um, so, yo, I've I've been friends with Tranquil a long time. Uh, met up my man, with my man, Rue, through his, his lovely piece. Um, shout out to girl Jacqueline Amy. Uh, what's up, homie? Um, thank you for introducing uh, this amazing person in, in Rue. And yeah, we've just, you know, we, we live in a pandemic times. It's hard to meet new cats because it's crazy. So we, we've been meeting through virtual shit and just trying to build and, and, and just create. And we kind of just kind of came together through just mutual love for nerd shit and just life in general, and just we vibed really well. So we're bringing you this episode zero right now of nothing from something or something from nothing. We're just trying to create. We don't know what the fuck this is going to be. Uh, we may talk on, like, what's the latest of shit going on in the news, or it might be some, like, nerd pop culture shit or, or whatever. It could be any type of nerd type shit. We're just going to have fun. But before we really dig into that kind of stuff and build this into something, we're gonna, we got we to gotta start from this nothing and let you know who the fuck you fucking with. A lot of y'all know who I am from Show Pal Show shit, but Rue doesn't know everything about me. Tranquil doesn't know everything about me. So we're actually going to interview each other right now. And so uh, for the next hour, sit tight, get to know us, and I'm going to throw it on hmm, Tranquil. We about to dig into your ass right now. So Rue, all right, all right. Why, why don't you hit her with the first question out the gate? Let's get to know our, our, our new uh, no, partner no, in crime no. here in Tranquil, man. What you want? Hit him, hit him with your first question, bro. I just want to know what got you into uh, cl- cosplay and makeup and all that. Man, um, it's, it's funny because it was never something I was trying to be into, you know? Right. Um, I was living in Japan at the time. What, what? I can't wait till we can travel again. I'll go back to visit because a lot of things have changed in the last mm-hmm. few years. Um, but I was living there and I just happened to be around some, you know, pretty dope pretty artistic people I guess I was just lucky um and they were like hey I saw you did your makeup one day for that party what about being a makeup artist for the play and I was like oh well this is not what I do but you know I don't like running away from no challenges so I gave it a go and somehow that turned into me being in the play and acting and being the main villain the one with the standing ovation, by the way. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I came back to the States and they're like, yo, clearly you're good at this. So maybe you should kind of move into it. And then frankly, Yaya Han, I think everybody who's a nerd knows who Yaya Han is. Mm-hmm. Um, she busted out in some Game of Thrones cosplay. And that's like 
my heart right there. That's like where I go for all my nerdisms right there. Um, and I was like, okay, I can do this. And ever since then, it's just kind of been a fun ride. That's amazing. What? Why, why were you in Japan? Like what brings you that? <laughs> well, one, because I wanted to travel. Like I've always, that's always been my stick. I've always had a right. pretty insatiable wanderlust. And, you know, I was like, well, Japan is, as a nerd, is someplace you always want to go. So I went there via the JET program. Um, like it's a really, it's like a top-notch Fed program that gets you into teaching while you're there. So I got to teach there for a little over two years. But during that time, I got to do so much other shit um, <laughs> just because I was in Asia, you know, on the other side of the world. I got to see so many other places right. and meet friends that I have today. So I think it was a pretty um, divine situation. It worked out real well. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's an amazing opportunity to go over there and just, I would hit the Naruto uh, museum immediately. <laughs> I feel that. I, feel, I mean, I want to go back because there's so many things I didn't see. Um, the Naruto, yeah, museum, that's one. They have a new thing where they have Mario Kart like legit Mario Karts and you can drive around Tokyo in that bitch. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how can you not want to do that? You can dress up <laughs> as the characters too, I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why? I mean, if you're going to be in a real life Mario Kart, I feel like dressing up is par for the course. I feel it. What was your favorite part of Japan, you think? Man, that's difficult. Uh, <laughs> that's really you. difficult. Um, that's a stack question. So it is. Right <laughs> it is. Um, I can't really say I ever had a bad moment right. in Japan while I was there. Um, like nothing worth writing home about. You know, everyone has like bad days, but nothing bad really. Um, I loved how literally tranquil it was in Japan. Um, it's a very, you know, very quiet, um, orderly, very clean. Yeah. country um and i mean once i got used to it the food is great because <laughs> i gotta tell you before living in japan my uh, palate was tiny mm -hmm. um and then they were like hey fish that might still maybe be moving with heads on them <laughs> that's what you're gonna do today and i'm like i don't got no choices do i no you don't okay well here we go <laughs> So it kind of started off with that. And now every place I go, like food is one of the number one things I look forward to experiencing. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, Where cool. Before... Go ahead, Ru. Go ahead, Ru. I was just going to ask, are you born and raised in Baltimore? Born and raised. There you go. Born and raised. Yeah, so let's get the seed question from the seed to now before the Japan shit. I want to, I, I want this, I want, I'm, I'm giving you, I want to give you easy shit right now before I dig into you. So okay. let's get the bio. Let's, let's know from the parents to, to now, uh, you know, let's get that seed question. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, you know, tell us about your parents and then you coming into the world and growing up and all that shit, like from Ruth's question onward. I mean, I guess you could say I lived a very, Huxtable slash Fresh Prince kind of life. Um, I had, you know, my mom and my dad. I had a brother. Um, and then 13 years later, I had a sister. So I have a baby sister. Um, and, you know, she's in school, uh, even during all this craziness right now. Um, and, you know, I kind of was always a kid that wanted to get into everything. I was, I, I did a lot of random everything when I was a kid I you know ballet gymnastics um I was a girl scout and I was a girl scout until I was 18 too so like I put in wow. years into that Where program them cookies yeah. <laughs> hustling right. them cookies yo cookies. always a top seller <laughs> always a top seller I, mean, I was like yo I got then people were coming up, you got them thin mints, you got them thin mints. Them, I was like, oh, them, man. them Samoas, son. That's my them shit. Samoas. Them Samoas, like all day, every day. Yo, every so day. raise so doing all that in Be More? Going back to okay. And so Maryland, yeah. Maryland for life, essentially. Until Maryland for went life, off to Japan. Uh, but I've definitely lived other places clearly now. Uh Japan. Sure. Um, I lived yeah. in Italy for a little while. Um, but yeah, Maryland, Baltimore, homegrown, wouldn't have it any other way. Okay. Now, do you, do you have, because 
I, one of my favorite comedians is from Be More, and uh, all he raves about is the crab he eats when he goes oh. home. Yeah. We're kind of like, that's that's what we're known for is the crabs. I mean, here's the thing. You got to have a mixture of wonderful seasoning and Obey. dirty ass water. All day. And Obey. all of that <laughs> makes the best crabs. I mean, they're bottom feeders. If they're in a pristine crystal lake, they're not going to be that tasty. So, <laughs> I mean, that's just what it is. So we got that Harbor Born, um, that Blue Crab, that Old Bay, that people literally come from other countries and states to get to season their food. Yeah, crabs are the shit. Um, and, you know, I would definitely say if you're new to, new to seafood, that's where you should start is with crabs, okay. for sure. Okay, I see you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, nah, I want some crabs nice. Nah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> What would your uh, parents tell us about a young tranquil? Um, that I used to be, well, my parents would say that I was always independent. My parents would also say that I was a little bit of a troublemaker when I was real young. But it was mostly only against my brother. I was like, well, you know. I was first. I don't understand why there's another one here. So apparently I <laughs> mean to that little boy <laughs> for like the first couple of years of his life. And then I realized he wasn't going nowhere. And I was like, well, I guess I have to deal with this. And I love him to death. <laughs> so, <laughs> But yeah, when I was young, that, I think that's what they would say, um, that I was meant to go places. I mean, I had a very, very supporting parents. So they pretty much believed that whatever I wanted to do, I could do. So right. I guess that's why I've done so much is because I've always been told I could. That's amazing. Are you the oldest? I am the oldest. That's right. Oldest I'm the oldest. I got it the worst from the parents. I'm the oldest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that first pancake. The yeah. one that always, that's that one. I always feel, because I'm the oldest too. I always feel like the first kid. Oh no. Oh, Rue. Rue froze. Rue froze. Right, Rue, 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 we're going to keep you there. I, I, so uh, to, to, until he gets back, then I guess to add to my question to you from you a second ago, Anita, then what would you be afraid your parents would tell us about you? Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Come on. Yeah. Give me the dirt. Give me the dirt. My nickname. I hated my nickname. <laughs> <laughs> my nickname I was called Pookie Girl and I was like that is such a lame lame nickname like you couldn't have given me something cooler than Pookie like I got Pookie as the name um, I can but, see how um, that one could be kind of weird <laughs> oh, gone. oh yeah <laughs> but um, I don't know like I feel like I was a good kid for the most part I was a good kid um, but like I said when I was messing with my brother they would tell you those stories and how I definitely got the whoopings for them. <laughs> got that whoop. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, pretty smooth. I feel like I'm probably more a troublemaker now than I was a kid. So, <laughs> but at this juncture, they can't do nothing about it. <laughs> so. Okay. What did young uh, Tranquil want to do earlier on? And, and like, what, what do you think was the first thing he wanted to do? And has it changed maybe? Uh, do you, oh, you know? Sure. Oh, so what, sure. I wanted, what, what initially did you want to do? Come an astronaut. For real, for real. Word. Like, were yeah. you into, like, space camp and all that stuff? Yeah, I wanted, like, I just thought it was, like, so Star Trek Voyager was, okay. is like, one of my very first, like, nerd memories of just, like, that is my thing. Star Trek is my thing. And I always thought, I was like, yo, there couldn't be anything cooler than space. Like, there's nothing like there's nothing to compare it to here and can't you imagine like I am a firm believer of collecting experiences and can you believe what kind of experience that would be to go to space like like you're one in billions of people that get to go to space so I feel like and I still kind of do like I don't want to be an astronaut though because I found out what you have to do to be an astronaut um Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, we were stalling for time. We we we, we lost root for a second. Um, My apologies. The 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 question I had asked that you had missed 
is uh, what was like one of the first things uh, Tranquil wanted to become. And she wanted to become an astronaut. And she was uh, breaking that down a little bit. Yeah, oh. I wanted to be an astronaut. I mean, like space, it's cool. Like it's, it's cool. Like I said, collector of experiences. I mean, like, how, like you can't, like that is a singular experience. Like there's, they're probably never going to meet any other people that have gone to space. Um, but then, like I said, when you get older, you find out what you have to do to become an astronaut. Like that trip, that's not a fun journey. Like that is a lot of work. And it's, you know, it's so dangerous. Like one thing, just one yeah. slip up and there's no recovery. You can't, there's no chance to like live through that kind of experience. But I think like now they have some weird thing. I think I read the other day that they said they're going to have they're building a hotel in space. <laughs> they plan on starting I've seen that. I've at twenty twenty five, right? Like, there's a meme. Y'all seen Infinity War? Yeah. There's, there's a meme of uh, one of Thanos's thugs when uh, when uh, Tom Holland throws him into space and he's all frozen. They they said that's what's gonna happen to you when your when your car declines for your room. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That's why I mean I can't imagine how expensive that that has to be. Yeah. Like, it can't be a, like a normal person's ability to afford, like, no. <laughs> at all. No, that's like, for Elon Musk and his family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, yeah. now that Rue's back, I'm gonna throw up for him to ask a question. But before I do, I, I want to make this controversial. Uh, F Mary Kill, uh, Tranquil, Star Wars, Star Trek, Battle mm -hmm. Scar Galactica. F marry kill. Which would you F? Which would you marry? Which would you kill? That's good. That's good. <laughs> Man. Yeah. I'd fuck Star Wars. Okay. This is a lot of interesting looking folk in Star Wars. <laughs> also, the uh the force. I mean, that's kind of just a cool thing to be a part of. <laughs> and get a little bit of that force energy uh, through the fucking, I'll take it. But um, Mary, Star Trek, and I, as much as I like Metal Star Galactica, I would definitely kill that if I had to choose between okay. the three. So more longevity with Star Trek for you then? So so just yeah. fucking Star Wars just is a one-night stand for you? So yeah, because, I mean, all right, there's a little, I know Star, Star Wars people gonna kill me. But... <laughs> Star Wars. There's so many issues I have with Star Wars. Right, we'll save that for another episode. I just wanted to start some controversy out the out the rip in this episode. Oh, zero. If we get on an episode about Star Wars and Star Trek, best believe I'm ready. All right, <laughs> Ru, go ahead, man. Hit her, hit her up because I wanted All to right. give you time to come I back. I got one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, did you go to college? And if so, where? I did go to college. I went to college in Pittsburgh. It was a private school. It was an all girls school, believe it or not. Um, but there was like one percentage of guys there. So you would have like a whole class of like 30 girls, there'd be one dude in there. So, I mean, I guess it was good for the guy because right. he, the, the pickings was inevitable when you go to a school with all girls. <laughs> But I had University of uh, Pittsburgh, Duquesne, and Carnegie Mellon down the street. So I didn't have to go far to find, like, you know, the Y chromosome. So it was all right, you know? There you go. Yeah, Pittsburgh sounds like a fun town. Oh, no, it's trash. Mm -mm, don't do it. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> really? It's, cool. Yes. It's all a facade. It's all a trick. I don't like, know much about Pittsburgh. I, I wanted to visit just because. Steel but... City. Like if you're going there for a singular purpose, that's that's completely different. Okay. But living there is when you start realizing really? the fuck shit. Oh yeah, yeah, that might be rough. Well, when you like, so you go, you go to Pittsburgh and you see the city and it looks all cool and big. It looks like, oh man, I bet fun things happen in the city. And then you find out the city shuts down at seven o'clock and nothing is open except Word? for food. Yes. I thought it was like a nice little spot for like dining and shit. Like, there ain't no nightlife. Like food spots. The, the, they have a nice life. It's called Southside. And Southside is literally just a strip of bars. Um, last I checked, it's the longest strip of bars on the planet. And it's literally just 
bar after bar after bar after bar after bar at maybe a little dance club bar after bar after bar so um that's where pretty much everyone who was like a college student or wanted to party or whatnot went to Southside. um and you know it was cool for a little bit but after a while you know a bar is a bar and i guess the other good thing too is if you ever got kicked out of one you could just literally go next door and get into another bar but um, other than that, no, I feel like it was all a trick. It was all, oh, I, yeah, it was a trick. <laughs> okay. Sure. Yeah. Mm. I got another question, though. Okay. What, what uh, was your favorite movie growing up? Mm. Mm. <laughs> that is a great question. <laughs> Start with your top five, if you can't. If 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 yeah, picking the number one, is, like, I was like, I don't know if I have a number one. Um, that that might Jurassic, help. Jurassic Park. Okay. Um. Let's see. You probably have never seen this, um, but it's called Connecticut Yankee in King Arthur's Court. Um, it was played by Ruby from The Cosby Show. Like she was the main character in this movie. Oh, shit. and it was literally, yeah, it was like a back in time author type of situation. She ended up, you know, back in time. And it, for me, as like a black girl, seeing a black girl back in time, yeah, you know, doing yeah. that whole author thing, like in the nineties, I was like, this is my shit. So, oh shit! Yeah, it's actually so, a re remade movie. There was a. It was initial. There, there was a Bing Crosby. Oh shit! Hold yeah. up. Yeah. It was an actual novel by Mark Twain. Actually, even going back before that, so it was a book, and then they like made a movie with Bing Crosby, and then I'm looking at IMDb right now. You had me like, yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> oh shit! Okay. Yeah. Keisha. Okay. Yeah. Now you know about this random movie. Um, yeah, that's totally random. <laughs> Right, it's super random. Like, I really feel like I'm the only one that's ever seen it ever. Um, probably at the time, Pocahontas. Okay. Um, the Disney version. Uh, same thing. Probably, I would say Pocahontas and Mulan were like, like fighting uh, okay. for my like favorite Disney Renaissance movie at the time. Uh, let me see what else. I feel like I saw Fifth Element a really long time ago. So probably Fifth Element. I think everyone loves Fifth Element. Uh, and let's see one more. I was a really big fan of the Olsen twins. So I had all of their shit. I had all of their VHSs. Mary um, Kate Nashley. Mary Kate Nashley. I was a huge Olsen twin fan. So um, I had that. That was a small obsession. Then along with Shirley Temple. So. Okay. okay. Yeah, good mm -hmm. stuff. Temple hey. infomercials. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Since I'm checking on the time, I wanted to each give us 20 minutes to uh, tackle uh, each other. I think we're gonna have to probably do another episode zero type where we do you know questions with each other. But I wanted to make sure 20 minutes on each know. of us. So we have three more minutes to really throw something at Tranquil uh, Rue. So I got a good let, one. let's throw some quick one. hot ones like that we can just get real quick answers from her real quick before we. I got a. I have a would you rather that I tell I ask everyone because it's a it's a one I like to people I like to know. There would we go. Would you rather know when and how you die mm. or know what comes after? Knows what comes after. There you go. She she's smart. She just knows because that's that's all that matters. That's all that matters. <laughs> like <laughs> that's yeah, knows what comes after. Absolutely. That's my favorite would you rather. I asked that to everybody. Oh, so what, tell it to me again because I was like too busy talking in my head thinking. <laughs> so it's would you rather know when and how you die uh -huh. or would you rather know what comes after? Oh, good shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Immediately. That's for like, Immediately. I have to say no what comes after as well. I'd have to do yeah. that because I want the best for my family. Yeah. Exactly. The people yeah. that, that ask when and how and everything, they're too wrapped up in their mortality. Yeah. You know, there's a whole lot of more of the world and the universe you're going to, I feel you're going to expose. Anyway, this is not my time. You have <laughs> <laughs> okay. So would, would that be the same for you though, Rue? What happened? 
Would that be the same for for yourself answering that same question? Oh, oh definitely. Yeah. 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 I don't I don't need to know when. That's yeah. that's not a problem. Okay. Yeah, no. <laughs> not at all. Uh, you got one last fire question for me, Kuya. Fire, fire, fire question. Uh mm. Damn it. I, I'm trying to think of something good, but it's like killing you think me. of something. Like, you think of something. I still got I got another hey, one for you. Know, what, what, what do you We got a couple mi- we I, two minutes on the clock. I'm looking at the clock. Go what, ahead. What what are you watching right now? Right. I mean, WandaVision. I mean, there I don't know go. who's not watching WandaVision right now. Um WandaVision sells at work. Uh I just finished Cobra Kai. Okay. And I'm about to start Juju Kaisen because I've heard nothing but great things about that anime. So me too. I have yeah. too. Yeah, I it's, it's like that. number one right now somehow or something like that. So it's yeah, I definitely want to get into it, and I can't wait for the new Demon Slayer uh, movie to hit. Like I, that, I'm waiting for. Okay, okay, I feel you. I gotta get into Demon Slayer too. Oh, it's so good. Highly recommend. I just seen the first two episodes, and it's pretty. Was that like? Did that like interest you though? Like, it's interesting. It's okay. interesting. Okay. It's it's it sucks when you have so many animes you watch in simultaneously, yeah. and you, you don't know who to give yourself to. I feel you. Demon Slayer is worth it though. I'll tell you that right now. I feel you. Anything, Kuya? Anything for our lady? I was trying, but because I know her so much, and we've had some conversations within the past week or so. I was trying to figure out a way to ask a certain question, but it's too personal. And so I'm going to say it for next time. <laughs> All right. She knows what's up. She knows what's up. I was trying to figure out a cool way to do it, but nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it later. <laughs> All right. So now, Tranquil, let's throw it on to Rue. Let's get him. Oh, hit, hit him on ask the top. what you want. <laughs> I mean, all right, let me see. All right, I'll start. Um, why is your name a root? I gave it to myself. <laughs> I was, I've been rapping. Well, I don't rap no more, but I was rapping from like sixth grade to early into college and everything, making that work. And I went through countless amounts of artist names, trying to figure out who I was. And, uh, you know, I just Googled. <laughs> I was very hippie. I was in like this hippie phase at the time. I wanted my, my persona to be very peace, love, and like spread that out. I still do want that, but it was like very hardcore and kind of like, force when I was in school you know how high schoolers are um but yeah rue basically means peace and love in Arabic that could be wrong I googled it and that's what came up so (laughs) I went off of that and I just went up I went off of it ever since and it kind of sticks people remember it you know Uh, well I lose it I love that but I'm not gonna lie I think a kangaroo off the rip though you know I get kangaroo I get rue Pac, I get rue tang clan (laughs) <laughs> uh yeah i get a lot of it <laughs> my, my friends are ruthless Ruth, they are ruthless you know? <laughs> i love it okay so then let me like i did with tranquil i'm gonna start you off easy man what okay. t- tell us tell us about your fam your parents and then when when bringing you into the world so from the seed into like high school well I was would they def- tell us your story from seed to high school i was definitely an accident <laughs> my, okay. my parents were not together when uh, they were, they weren't, but let's just say I didn't grow up with the dad. I grew up in Hawaii, lower okay. class, um, uh, on welfare, on food stamps and everything like that. But at the same time, growing up in paradise, so you really don't have a whole lot to not be thankful for, you know, moved out to California when I was maybe in fifth, sixth grade. I went back and forth a lot, stayed with my mom, then went back with my grandma, then just back and forth until I hit him out middle school. You know, uh, they, they didn't know what to do with me when I first got to California. So they put me in uh, special ed. <laughs> I was on the mm. short bus for a couple of years, which is no diss to anybody that has those. You know, I, yeah. you know, but it's like it was weird that that was the school system at the time that they didn't know what to do with me. So they just thought we'll send them over there. Yeah. And then middle school came about. I mean, it actually helped out in the long run because I got something called an IEP. Helps me out with all classes that I ever want to take. I'm, I'm first in line. I ain't got to wait for nothing. So it's cool. But um. Yeah, I don't know. I wanted to do music for a long time, doing that all throughout high school. I made sure I got good grades, so I did, they, my parents couldn't give me lo- no lip when going to uh, the studio on the weekend. What made you fall in love with music? What got you into music? Like Biggie Smalls. from everything else. Ooh, Biggie. Um, my dad, rest his heart. He uh, or his soul. I mean, he uh, he's a big hip hop head. He actually took me to a Wu Tang Wu Tang concert when I was an infant. 
because <laughs> I, I guess it was like his his weekend to watch me and stuff. Okay. And he, had t- he had tickets. And he was like, I'm not missing this. <laughs> so like, he put me on his shoulders and I was in the Wu-Tang. Like I've seen pictures of myself at this concert as wow. like a little white. Yeah, it was pretty funny. But um, I don't really know. You know, I think not growing up with a father figure, because like I said, my dad was here, but he really wasn't. Yeah. Um, and my stepdad at the time, really, you know, POS, not really teaching me what a man is. I feel like hip hop, specifically old school, ni- not even old school, for, but like 90s hip hop, early 2000s, there was a lot of, you know, dudes talking about getting out of the gutter, making something of themselves for bettering themselves and their family, their community, not right. nothing like how it is now. And that's kind of like, those gave me my morals. And I was like, well, I, I love this music. I want to make this music because that's oh. something that like I can, you know, actually put out. So I worked a cool over 10 years working in studios trying to make it. But then, you know, life happens and uh, you just find other passions. And especially with where hip hop and music is in general now, I'm not trying to get face tattoos and dye my hair all kinds of colors and, you know, (laughs) do whatever it takes for fools to become famous now. So I'd just rather do my own thing. Wow, man, that's powerful. A lot of you don't hear a lot of people saying, you know, hip hop gets the bad rep. Because of gangster rap and gun, you know, just all the stereotypes that, that yeah. rap gets a lot. So that's that's cool to, you know, it helped you build your confidence with yourself and everything. And yeah, uh, and you know, it's I grow sorry to cut you off. Um, it's crazy because you know, you see a lot of dudes of my complexion saying, Oh yeah, I rap, you know. And then you hear a lot of these Eminem type of white boy rappers that, you know, spit kind of similar flows because you know, they, they, they don't, I wouldn't say that, you know, they don't understand struggle or nothing like that, but it's just like, you hear this kind of repetition when it comes to white rappers and everything. And, mm-hmm. you know, I just grew up saying exactly what was on my mind at the time and how I felt it. And I got a lot of respect from people from all backgrounds from it. So, mm-hmm. and on top of it, like I have a different, my dad is full on Hawaiian and Japanese. And then my mom is Puerto Rican and Irish. And I come out looking like this. So I had a lot of identity issues growing up because I'm told you're one thing, you know, be proud to be Hawaiian, be proud to be Japanese, be proud to be Puerto Rican. But then the rest of this world sees you as like, you know, little white boy, you know, talking shit, always type of things. And I get it. You know what I mean? People that look like me are sometimes can be pieces of shit. But um, I mean, I've really kind of grounding myself and being cool with who I am and know who I am and surrounding myself with people who, you know, really shouldn't give a fuck, give a damn who or what you look like. And I just, you know, I find my family like that. And it's cool. Like, I don't, I don't really mind it a whole lot, but I definitely give a lot of like who I am and all of my mannerisms and just kind of like, yeah, like, guess, you know, a lot of who I am has come from a lot of black culture, a lot of, uh, a lot of different cultures, but mainly black culture. So I give, I give a lot of love to my brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? So thanks for sharing that, man. Cause I know that yeah. can be difficult um, as well. So thank you, man. Really. Yeah. You know, this is what it's open forum number love right here, right now. Yeah, that's what we're and here I hope for, everybody man. that watches this says that as well, because that's what it's all about right now. We should, you know, tell our true selves, live our true spirits. Um, yeah. so go ahead, I don't think, I don't think, oh, oh go ahead. Tranquil. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know that I love to travel, so I just want to know more about Hawaii, man. Like, I've never been, and I want to go so bad. Like, where do I go when I go? Oh, I'll send you a whole list, but <laughs> it depends It depends on what island you go to for sure. I mean, when I go back home, which I should be looking back to going back in August this year, hopefully with, you know, all these restrictions and whatnot, um, I mainly just go for food. <laughs> you know, I don't go for the beach. I'm a mountain boy. I like taking my hikes. But with this complexion comes sunburns, and I don't like. <laughs> I don't. I don't like to be at the beach a whole lot. Look at my boy telling so, his truth. <laughs> you know? So um, find me at the cafeteria or something. Like I'm always just grubbing. That's that's really where my heart lays. I feel like is with food. You know. Hell yeah. So Hell yeah. Uh, I, I definitely. T- I'll send you to all the spots food wise, but other types of things. No, that's, know, you know, that's definitely that's one of the major things I travel for is for different types of cuisine. So yeah, and that's, what, that's why I'm so jealous you've gotten to go to Japan already because there's so many joints that I've been oh, wanting man. to try. And I've eaten weird. some weird stuff. I know that sounds wrong, but I have. I've eaten hey, some it's, it's all weird if you think <laughs> about it. Just depending on where you go, 
if you never experienced anything like that before, then it's going to be different, you know? But I yeah. like, that's what I love about the culture. Growing up in Hawaii, it's a big old melting pot of all types of religion mm-hmm. and religion, all different types of uh, people from all different types of backgrounds. And I'm used to eating almost every kind of Asian cuisine there is. And I'm grateful for it because a lot of cats out here, unless you're cultured enough, you know, you sometimes can be a little hesitant, you know, like I know with, um, Filipino cuisine, you know, they like to keep the head on the fish for su- certain dishes, like milk fish and stuff like that. I don't mm-hmm. care. I love it. But I have friends that think I can't eat someone with a face on it. I was like, well, you already are. The face is just gone. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Hell yeah. So, you know, I, there's definitely people that I feel like need to open up more. But this is why I like this show, though, is so we can talk about these experiences so we mm-hmm. can see from different yeah. perspectives and different views of like where it is that way people don't have to be so close-minded and people like oh well you know i'm similar to them maybe i could try that too you know straight up love it yeah. well, that too. nice 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 yeah I'm which, I'm which just, island were you I'm on bro oh from oahu. oahu oahu okay oahu i'm from mililani that's my town okay yeah. cool north side <laughs> i gotta give you a recommendation tranquil polynesian cultural center I don't, that that that's probably very touristy, right? Hawaiian really? Disneyland, it's Hawaiian Disneyland. But it's pretty dope, wouldn't you say? I think if they want to get a it's good cool. taste, it's cool. It's it's definitely cool. I think it's hilarious, and I'm I'm not saying this as disrespect to nobody's religion. It's a it's in a Mormon town, and it you is. can definitely tell. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> you go to the liquor store, there ain't no liquor. <laughs> <laughs> but they you break know? down the island culture, though. I think pretty tight. They, they do. They break you down. What it would be like. Living back. Yeah, they they break down almost every Polynesian Polynesian yeah. background, whether whether it's Tongan, Samoan, New Zealand, Hawaiian, mm. and that's I love that because that's kind of I feel we we should have more of those you know interactive museums yeah. where we really actually get to know traditional um, cultures and everything mm-hmm. you know yeah. because I feel like a lot of the a lot of the history that we learn in today's age is very colonized history you know what i mean it's not there it's it is all colonized it's all colonized history it's all colonized. you're right the winners write the history so um it's it it is cool looking at seeing it from like where it actually like stemmed from rather than what it turned into after influencers came to the island oh yeah you know yeah yeah that's why I highly recommend it. anybody. I've been, you know, several times and that's my spot. I tell everybody. Um, yeah. yeah de- and definitely do like a luau and shit. Um, highly recommend. And there's like a pe- a food truck. I'm, I'm not sure if you know, remember this, uh, a Rube. There's like a Giano's or something like a shrimp s- truck that just. Oh, the shrimp truck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. I don't know the name. I just call it the shrimp truck, but yeah. I know what you're talking about. There's some, there's some good shit. I'm a good. I'm oh, a there's a, there's amazing food. I can tell you exactly what to eat down to the dipping sauce. I right, so you uh, know what since uh, it's, it's it's on you, so we gotta put it back on you because we are, we need to get our questions in on you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead. Top you five, go. top five foods you you uh, that people you would think are weird that you that top you get five. down with. Okay, well, I don't know if this is a family friendly show or not, but I'm just gonna say I am a stoner and I'm proud to be. Yeah. Um, with, with that, you make some co- concoctions over the years. Let's do it. Um, Tell us. I had this one thing that I used to make at my grandma's house where I would get a uh, basically a, a bowl filled with Oreos and pour almond or oat milk in it and eat it like cereal. But I would leave it in the fridge first because I want the Oreos to get soggy and then <laughs> I can just go back. It was It's really gross, but it's good. Um, <laughs> Tell it's it. like you wanted to make ice cream, but like not. Oh. Yeah, I, I got it, it, it's real lazy cuisine. Like I'm, I, I love good cuisine, but I've also made some really gross, lazy cuisine that's still dank, just under the right circumstances. I love this type of shit. Tell us more. You know? Give so us I'll more. be making, I'll make a uh, some some cup of noodles, but I'll take out the liquid and then pan fry it, and then okay. crack some eggs, and then I'll make a quesadilla out of that if I have some leftover spam and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I just say I eat spam musubis and people think I'm weird because a lot of people in the mainland and or over here don't eat spam like that. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That's a very so Hawaiian eat, shit uh, type of thing. Yeah. yeah, it is. But I mean, other than that, not really. I wouldn't say anything too weird. I just, I'm a person that loves culture of any type of all backgrounds. I love people, you know? 
So Word. if you have a if you have a culture with food that I haven't tried yet, I'm trying to get to know. Uh, you. Yeah. Okay. Same. You know, I want to know. I love baklava. I don't. I know that's not weird, but that's oh, like my bak- favorite. Hell yeah. That's my shit. You know. Baklava. And now shit. that I. I'm with the person I am with. Shout out Jacqueline. Uh, I'm getting to know more about Filipino cuisine than I did previously. Dope. Like, I love fruit salad. Kuya knows that. Hell yeah, son. <laughs> Filipino. I got to teach. We got to get tranquil on that Filipino fruit salad, yo. Oh, she yeah, won't I've get off I've never had it, so I'm definitely down. It's amazing. <laughs> you know it's good when you go out of your way to buy the ingredients. And I did cop it when you posted that picture, by the way, the other day. I, I, I think you told me. I think Hell you told yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Tranquil, get a, get, get a, hit him with some hard, man. We got to get it into him. We only have Let like six, seven more minutes on him. And then, he, then it's on me. Let's, open book. Mm. What do you think your biggest failure was in your current career path? Oh, I'm failing every day. <laughs> I feel like co- life is constant failure, you know, but with that, it brings so much opportunity with mm-hmm. that and more and so much knowledge. You know, um, I'm I'm not going to say I'm trying to be a barber. I am a barber. I've been licensed for half a decade, but, um, you know, I don't work in a shop. I, I'm very selective with my clients. So, you know, some can say and that all depends on what you think is like, oh, I'm, I'm starting to stray off from the question. You said failures. I mean, I feel like I failed as a barber. I've failed, you know, countless amounts of times with my music, but I don't really like to think of them as failures. Like I said earlier, I like to just think of them as like, you know, lessons and everything. I keep moving forward. I don't like to think of it as, you know, you fail and then you just give up or you quit. I don't like putting like negative um, words to things when I know that with that negativity can also be some positive or uh, some light with it, you know? So I, I like to say I'm still working at it every day, no matter what it is, because I think not my new path is to create content with, you know, this new age of what we're being brought into. I just I'm trying to find my path through it all. I feel that. Me too. You know, I got, I'm, I'm good with connections. I'm good with meeting folk. I'm good with talking. And I think that's going to that for personally, that's going to bring me somewhere. I don't know where, though, but it's going to. I feel that. Dope. I love that answer too, man. Props on that reply. Thank Damn. You. I appreciate that was a good, it. That was a good reply. That got me motivated and shit. Okay. So then you know what? I'm gonna keep it on motivation. Who are who right. give me your top five or top three people throughout history that kind of you know formed your line of thinking and got you into this great spirit that is the rule? Mm. That's a good question. I mean, definitely. Um, I don't know, you know, probably my therapist. <laughs> okay, sh- Yo, shout my out therapist. to therapist for real. My therapist probably put me on to, because my therapist has really kind of opened my eyes with where I'm at spiritually and uh, just how I, how I view the world now. You know what I mean? Nice. I could, I could say, I could say some big, you know, historical figure, but I think sometimes it hits home a little more than we think. I think the people that are here now, we might look at somebody that's done great things, and you think, yeah, you know, that's the ter- type of person that really pushes me. And if that is, then great. But I try and look at the people around me into my day to day life to give me inspiration. You know what I mean? Because these mm-hmm. are realistically, even if, you know, we're brand new friends that were just starting a podcast or my girl or friends I've had for 10 plus years, these people motivate me because, in a sense, they just keep me going. So I guess the people in my life, <laughs> not really a top five, but people around me for sure. No, you guys definitely. motivate me. Oh, thank you very much, sir. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my man just dropping gems on us, too. Look at that. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My heart is made of stone. I don't have it like he does. <laughs> no, I'm a, no, believe me, I, I have my moments, too. But it's just like, I feel like when I talk like this, when on a platform and everything, I feel like it's my time to be my true self. Yeah. If we, if we talk off, you, you, you're going to see a completely different motherfucker. I swear to God. Like, I, I can get rowdy. But I feel like with this, it gives me the opportunity to kind of put out there who I would like to be or who I would love to, like, see other people be. But not, you know, I want people to be themselves. But I want people to know that you can without having to do anything extra. Mm-hmm. You know, so I guess that's just, that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> nice. But we're going to give you both sides. I want us to explore that, you know, as we do this. And we'll, we'll talk more, you know, future episodes. Oh, we will. This episode zero. But I love that. I love I love what you're presenting. And also when you, you know, but I would love to see both sides as we do this. You will. You, so you this will. Is, this Trust is me. 
This is good talk right here. Tranquil, hit him up. Was it on you? I don't know if it was you or me. I don't know. I, I think we need to start asking Kuya some questions. Was it me? I do. I do. Yeah, no, I got one more minute. Two more minutes before you hit me. All right. You guys got one question. For one me. more minute. Okay. Well, um, I'm going to piggyback off of a uh, kind of similar vein. Um, your top three movies. Top three movies? Easy. Uh, Grown Ups, Ready Player One, and um, what was the other one? Probably, uh, what was that Studio Ghibli movie? Spirited Away. Oh, good one. Yeah, I could watch that all day. Such a good one. I've had so many like in life experiences with, with that movie. So Yeah. And if it ain't if it ain't Ready Player One, it's Pixels with Adam Sandler. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, no. I don't choose good movies. I just choose my favorite movies. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. All right. I guess I'm gonna keep a continuous question since since we're kind of okay. doing that, since you kinda kept that same from Tranquil's question. Then I'm gonna yeah. do a, the same F Mary Kill. To you, Rue, that I did with Tranquil then. F. Mary Kill, Star Wars, Star Trek, and Battlestar Galactica. Damn, you know what's crazy is I ain't got no attachment to any of them. Oh, wow. Okay. um, Yeah, I mean, I like them. But my thing is always, like, I I like people with powers and, like, like, all that extra shit. So, like, people, like, basically playing space cops never really (laughs) uh, did nothing for me. But I guess, like, since you asked... um, I'd marry probably Star Trek, but the new one. Oh, you, I mean, technology helps Star yeah. Trek out a lot. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I was I was saying it because Zoe Saldana is in it, but um, probably <laughs> F Star Wars and kill Battlestar. It's a cool, it's cool, but no, okay, See, great well, mind. Both of y'all are long great relationship mind. with Star Trek, though. I'm I'm kind of surprised by Zoe Saldana. Zoe Zaldana. That's the only reason. <laughs> I feel that. Okay. Okay. All right. I guess it's on me now. Let's do this. Who, who coming at me first? What y'all got? Where were you born and raised? I oh, yeah. born and raised. Uh, well, born in San Diego, California. I am a West Coast cat. Originally, um, shout out to uh, Balboa Hospital in San Diego, National City. Represent where all the Filipinos are at. Um but raised all over the world. I was only there for like four years and then went from there to Siganella, Sicily. Uh, that's that island at the end of the boot of Italy. So Sicily to then um, Winter Harbor, Maine for another four years, then to Charleston, South Carolina for four years, then to Gulfport, Mississippi, right by Biloxi for like a year. And then after that, my dad retired from the military, then went out to uh, Washington State, uh, Port Orchard, across the Puget Sound from Seattle for like a year or so, and maybe a year and change there. Then back across to the East Coast, to Charleston, South Carolina, to which I then was there for like two or three years and then graduated from high school and then went into the military myself and then was all over the place. But uh, mm-hmm. that's my genesis as a kid being a military brat. Damn, so you just been all over. Hell yeah. Place. And then was all over when I joined the military. So kind of right. very uh, international kid. That's cool. Yeah. How long did you serve for? I served when I went in for four years, uh, okay. 96 to 2000. Uh, wasn't what for What branch of military? What, say again? What branch of military? U.S. Navy, uh, which would made me the fourth generation Navy. Um, oh, and right. that's kind of why I went in. I had scholarships for my writing and my music because I was a, you know, a very creative cat as a young kid, uh, artist, writer, wanted to break into comic books, um, wanted to get into acting. I was acting in high school. Uh, like a, my first movie I did was my senior year in high school. I was in Ace Ventura 2, uh, When Nature that's Calls. That's where I got my uh, nickname, The Golden Child. That was like my first moniker at the time. Um, but Decided to go into the military because uh, as much as I had scholarships for my writing and my music to various universities, I was afraid Uh, being, you know, Navy kid. My parents had like a year or two before that filed for bankruptcy. And I just even though I had scholarships, I was just worried about money. You know what I'm saying? Like because I knew there's all these other ancillary costs that go along with college. And uh, during that time, you know, just being pushed military, military from being a fourth generation kid that would become go into the military. It was just like what I, my, my dad's side knew. 
uh, and with my mother being, you know, a product of coming over from the Philippines and many Filipinos coming over, it was kind of just like that security blanket. So that kind of what pushed me in. And I had two uh, friends that were going in and it just was like the perfect storm. Me being afraid, even though I had scholarships, but having the family and having friends doing military, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna do it. But I only did four years because I was like, nah, this ain't for me. I, I felt like a modern day slave uh, to be while being in the military, to be honest with you, like another number, another body to just do manual labor and work. And it wasn't for me. I was a creative cat. And uh, that's why I only did my time in the military for four years. I feel that. Yeah. Mm. You got a well, hmm. in terms of your, uh, your, you know, your traveling all about and whatnot, in terms of where, where would you think your favorite place stationed? you think like where was your favorite place um well stationed in norfolk uh virginia and uh so that was the only real place i was because i only did four years but mm -hmm. i traveled a lot you know being on i was a a small boat uh called the uss samuel b roberts it was a ffg ffg 58 uh short for fast frigate uh we are called what was called the tip of the spear uh, when you have like a big battalion of ships or group of ships that go out on deployment, uh, the big ship you're trying to make sure it doesn't go down is your aircraft carrier. And then you have like your destroyers, you have your frigates and you have some other refueling ships, some other LHDs, other different types of ships. But the ship that's at the very front that we call the tip of the spear of justice, you know, the, you know, this BS at the military and colonization does in a way, you know, we are the very first ship you would encounter. Uh, so we had like front facing guns and we have helicopters and that's the kind of ship I was on. We were the first ones that would see any kind of trouble if there were to be trouble. Um, but, you know, this is we're, we're way advanced as a society now. There's we're not having the same kind of uh, sea battles as they did back in the World War and shit. But uh, but yeah, I was on a wow, fast frigate in space now. Yeah, everything. Everything's ah. space time now. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Was that the question? Oh, it was. Where was I at? You said where was the favorite place I was at? So. Yeah, I was stationed in Norfolk and then I traveled all through the Caribbean because a lot of our workups were in the Caribbean and then went across the ocean, been all around the top of Africa. Uh, uh, as soon as you go there, the Straits of Gibraltar, all around the Mediterranean, uh, then you go through the Mediterranean and go through the Suez Canal to then go to the Middle East because I was, you know, in the military between 96 and 2000, when we had operation, you know, after Operation Desert Storm, uh, I was part of Operation Desert Thunder, where we were still claiming that Iraq and all of these countries had nuclear weapons, which have still have yet to be proven to varying degrees, you know, but I won't get into all of the politics of the shit, but we were there to, you know, look out for that type of shit. Mm -hmm. And, but yeah, so I did a lot of Africa, Europe, Middle East, but never was a Far East sailor, a West Coast type sailor. I did everything that a, an Atlantic Coast based sailor who was stationed out of Norfolk would experience uh, by going to South America, the Caribbean, the Mediterranean, Europe, Africa type shit. So got okay. to go to a lot of places and really live that sailor life, you know, that that stereotype, you know, you know, going in and out from port to port, having fun, slanging, throwing that. <laughs> V, you know, <laughs> I was a wild cat. I've already had these conversations with Anita before I, I found the amazing woman that I now have as a wife. I was a, I was a playboy throwing that. <laughs> I was, I was a hoe. I was a hoe professional. <laughs> go ahead. So there you go. So I enjoyed every port. If those, I can't say I claim one because I was a, I called my player card, my pimp card, the Baskin Robbins. 31 flavors, and I was all about every flavor, son. And his stamp card ready to go. There you go. Stamp. Uh, 10 stamps get you a free Sunday. You know, <laughs> what you got for me, Rue? Uh, all right, maybe just to get away from the whole military questions, switch it up a little bit. What was, uh, what was like the first comic that got you, or any type of nostalgic type of pop culture that really kind of like got you in there was it seeing wow. star wars in theaters for the first time was it you picking it up a spider-man comic you know okay what was it um i that's a great question um 
I, I, I'm thankful and I'm old enough, you know, born in 1977 that I was able to experience the 80s to, to from 8-bit gaming to 16-bit gaming to 64 to 32 to, you know, PlayStation, Xbox, all of that shit. Um, so I remember seeing Star Wars in the theaters and all of that. But like what really got me uh, was comic books, Marvel Comics. If I take off this background, um, most people see Spider-Man was my guy. Um, along with the X-Men, but really Spider-Man because it he was just kind of like this downtrodden, nerdy-ass kid that was trying to come up and get the girls, but Flash Thompson, he wasn't the cool kid. He was the nerd. He wasn't getting the chicks. And I was kind of like that in a way, uh, I, I think, early on, but then I kind of grew into just being who I am in high school. I let my friends uh, talk on me when we do, like, uh, when we bring on, like, our peeps, maybe on, on another episode, talk about, you know, who the fuck I was and shit. But Spider-Man was like my guy. And then I would also say X-Men being a POC, being a Filipino uh, mixed kid. You know, I could relate with just being different. And so Marvel Comics with X-Men and Spider-Man was my shit Um, because, yeah, I wanted to be a hero, but being misunderstood and being different. And that's kind of, you know, growing up with Jim Lee X-Men, Will Sportacio X-Men, you know, watching Image Comics birth from Marvel with all the great artists that were at, you know, on Marvel, then forming their own books with Image. Um, I was right there with when a lot of nerd shit was popping off. And so I'm great, very grateful for that. But yeah, uh, Spider-Man, I, I can like, you know, drop because I have a lot of these issues too. When I finally got older, you know, Amazing Spider-Man number 300 giving us like Venom and shit. Sp- Amazing Spider-Man number 129, first appearance of Punisher. Uh, like these became gems in Amazing Fantasy 15, the first appearance of Spider-Man, like trying to find those particular books became like a hobby of mine as a young kid, hunting them down and got real super nerdy with that shit. As you can tell, when I can throw out numbers of particular issues of first appearances of cats. I love the hunt. I love that hunt. You feel me? It's it's interesting too, because before I actually am a new Spider-Man fan. Like I wasn't really like I didn't dislike Spider-Man, but I wasn't like ooh Spider-Man. I was definitely an X-Men uh, fan. Hell yeah. But speaking of your Spider-Man love, how did you feel about Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse? Oh, absolutely loved it. It's something I've been wanting to happen and see happen. Is it's such an amazing expanded universe. So we got to see different touches, different glimpses into the multiverse and these different characters. So I absolutely loved it. And rem- and also being a fan of Miles Morales, finally seeing a Spider-Man I could sort of semi-relate with as, as a POC, uh, being a fan of the ultimate Spider-Man that uh, kind of birthed from, you know, introducing this ultimate universe outside of the regular Marvel stuff. And then Bendis creating uh, Miles Morales uh, after the death of uh Peter Parker, Spider-Man within the Ultimate Universe to then, the, I, shit, girl, if, as a Spider-Man fan, that was mm. everything to me. And then okay. uh, to have the POC-based Miles, uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man leading that shit, I, I was loving it. And then to give a nod yeah. to my man, uh, Childish Gambino. Uh, Childish Gambino, yeah. You know what I'm saying? With when uh, And I'm forgetting my boy's voice right now. Uh, Glover, what's Oh, Danny goes there. Wait, wait, wait. He did the voice of in, in the cartoon series, and so it was good did, to yeah. Miles. Did he do Miles? Yeah, yeah. initially, yeah. so they gave him the Prowler voice uh, of mm. the cut of the uncle for that. So it was just you could see the love for long term Spider Man fans. They really gave it to us uh, with that yeah. shit. So I was hyped for that. That's, shit. that's okay. true. Okay, yeah, that's awesome because that was definitely when I was like, oh, I might be a Spider Man. Oh, so that fan. turned you into a Spider Man fan? Was Spider-Man. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. It was a love letter to Spider-Man fans. Totally. Yes. Well done. Sure. Mm-hmm. I will. Right, this is easy, man. Come on, give me some Ru. I got, I got, I, I got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> we just get into them one at a time because I, what, what I think is so amazing about you is basically everything you just said, where it's like, you got to see so many of these different phases of what this culture is. You know what I mean? And you got, you were in it in like the prime time of it, you know? It's amazing that you got to see so many things coming out the way, when they did. But on top of that, my question is going to lead up to is like, you also started to see the change of oh, when yeah. things started to, you know, be way more inclusive and started, they started like casting POCs and, and things started to get more 
representative. I, I wanted to know, and Tranquil can uh, come on this if you know she wants to. I just want to know because I know I don't have a whole lot of, I wouldn't say say, but just like not a whole lot of experience. One because of my age, and two, it's just like I'm kind of like been growing up in this new age of like people being more represented. You know what I mean? So it's like, how do you? What was it like growing up? and not having that representation the way you do now. And it's not even where it should be now. You know what I'm saying? I'll just say that. But it's it's still like showing like we're getting somewhere one step at a time. So what was it like growing up, you know, reading comics and stuff and seeing people that didn't look like you? Like what, how would you connect with that still, you know? Great you question. Go first or me? <laughs> you wanna go first or me? I'm sorry. I, know ahead, loaded, it, I just know a lot. A lot of people don't talk about that side of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm very interested. Well, it's interesting because I feel like a lot of my uh, pop culture, nerd culture, started actually far east and then came back home. Um, because you know, like I was watching anime before I knew I was watching anime. You know, like right. Pokemon and all of those things. I just thought they were cartoons on TV until I found out. Oh shit. You know, they're Japanese. Yeah. Um, but I think for me, honestly, the first thing I would say would be Blade. And I don't think Blade gets nearly enough credit as as it should. Like the Blade, like the Blade series was so successful. That's why we have Sam Raimi Spider-Man. Like that is the reason they had the money to make Sam Ra Raimi Spider-Man. And then after they made Sam Raimi Spider-Man, and this is kind of like how you see kind of like the, the back working, the next movie, Blade, the second Blade movie, which is arguably for most people the, the best of the Blade trilogy. Yep. Um, they had a smaller budget than their original movie. And this was after the Sam Raimi first Spider-Man that like, blue the blue every like like box office expectation like the amount of money they made off the original right. um like sam raimi spider-man is insane um but like even though like back then i think it's better now like you could you could still tell that they weren't trying to support you know people right. of color but at the same time blade is the reason why we get to have a Marvel Cinematic Universe. And so I think that was kind of like the eye opener for me when it comes to, you know, any type of comic book situation in movies and mainstream media now is that we have, you know, Blade to thing for that. And um, now that we have Black Panther, I think, you know, it's basically busted the door open to seeing Black people not as like a monolith, but a group of very different people with like like goals that are you know just as into this as everyone else is so i think that's where it started for me for sure. all right so for me and i and i echo everything tranquil said right there about all that especially in regards to films and representation um but going back to earlier with what i was saying with the comic books you know long time marvel head like dc as well but more so marvel head because it was rooted in reality actually cities new york city towns yeah that we could relate with. Uh, you could, Metro, Metropolis and Gotham City and, and Keystone City are cool and shit, but those weren't real shit. It was New York, you know what I'm saying? And that's where the playground with Marvel you can relate with and wh which I felt more I can relate to. But at the same time, characters were very stereotypical that were of POC nature and there wasn't enough of them. And so, uh, as I was saying earlier, I was all about my Spider-Man and X-Men but, you know, again, there was lacking in representation. So I gravitated towards Spider-Man and X-Men, but then more so uh, as an artist uh, at, at that time, uh, wanting to become an artist, loving these comic books, uh, not seeing the representation. I was like, let me create. And so, you know, being a fan of this material, wanting to create because I didn't see it, started creating my own characters, started getting into the creators of my favorite comic books which, like I was saying, Jim Lee, Wills Portacio, Todd McFarlane, Rob Liefeld, Jim Valentino, they eventually splintered off and formed Image Comics, uh, yeah. who we now know today who are amazing. But mm -hmm. it was amazing to see this group of creators working for this big conglomerate decide to just rebel, form this new company who knew something was going to be made out of it. And with the fact that a lot of them were POCs, 
was kind of cool. And I was like, okay, so now I'm going to see them create their own shit and we'll see re that representation. However, it didn't exactly turn out that way, but it was still an opener and a path. Yeah. But yeah. basically that just kind of just told me as a young kid and, and, you know, just growing up in society and seeing the world and being kind of like a young woke cat, they're not going to give it to us. We got to make it for ourselves. And so I started in high school creating my own universe um, and writing my own materials. And so I'm actually, I, as you see, I turned off my background, my virtual background. So you can see the Spider-Man love, the Marvel's love. I'm going to actually show you a piece I did back in high school right now of my creators that I created that were born out of loving X-Men and Spider-Man shit. So watch this, y'all. I'm going to pull this up for y'all to see. <laughs> I guarantee, I guarantee he put the background to make me jealous. Also, <laughs> I'm sure he did, actually. All right, so I'm going to bring it back to me. Here you go, y'all. Yeah. You can kind of see there's a little bit of a glare, but these are my characters. That's dope. I call it the That's United dope. Universe. Um, we got a... They're basically characters from, like, various countries. I was very, again, X-Men, a fan of X-Men, so... yeah. I'm gonna actually throw this in the edit, so I'm gonna not keep that up too long. But uh, It'll be a thumbnail. Yeah, you'll see it, see it over right now. But uh, <laughs> creating my own characters. Got a my my leader character Messiah, based out of Africa. Got this character Sanai, uh, from Japan. Uh, characters from Atlantis. You know, to get a little bit more fantasy based as well. But I was like, you know what? They're not gonna give it to us. We gotta make our own. And mm -hmm. I. I, I'm, you know, that just inspired me to keep pushing and to just, you know, if again, society, you know, you know, has the dominant, the winners is, is what's going to be out there. So you got to make it your own. And I love that, you know, since then, a lot of people that were inspired by image, I've met and talked to and interviewed a lot of the image comics creators. It's just about you know, building your own and then, you know, hopefully and getting people to support your own. That's another thing we got to do. There's a lot of people that are creating materials out there, but we still yeah. fund the big cats. Yeah. We can't always yeah. expect these big cats to make, give us and showcase our shit or they'll steal our shit. Support these people that are really about that shit, that are showing that love yeah. and, and that that's how it's going to happen. But yeah. Yeah. Like Mr. Nancy says, uh, angry gets shit done. So, um, yeah, for sure. Definitely in the creation department. I, you know, I didn't realize how important what, you know, we do is until, you know, way, way into it, you know, because you start off just doing something because you love doing it. And then you realize how much you impact like other people you know, and you might be the inspiration, you might be that POC, that Black person that um, brings another person into the fold. So I think, um, you know, with this, with creating our own, we definitely have to strengthen our communities as best as we, as best as we can. And like, just like, hold on to each other. Cause like, like uh, Kuya said, they're not going to give us anything. So we got to make it and take it. Definitely. That's a good segue before we leave out to like tell everybody what we're going to do. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a question piece on time. Uh, if y'all had any more that you want to hit me up with. Y'all been um, easy on me. <laughs> I, you know what, I feel like they're good questions, though. Like I, I do, too. You know, for sure. I'm your favorite acting role. There you go. Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, man. Um... Wow. I, <laughs> damn. Like I've been acting since 1995. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the, the, you know what? I got, got one, but it'll never be seen. Uh, everybody can peep my IMDb. Look up Patrick Michael Strange on IMDb or ask Alexa. You know, Alexa will tell you, Alexa knows more about me than some of my friends do, but <laughs> look me up on IMDb. You can see my credits, but uh, I've done a lot of work being that, you know, I've worked, I was in the military and post-military I've worked for the government and various sources. I'm not going to say what I do because it's not for y'all to know because y'all ain't cleared yet. <laughs> but there's certain things, projects I've worked on uh, for the government that uh, I, this one I can put out there. I did this project with the U.S. Army back when uh, we were first going into Afghanistan and we were teaching our U.S. soldiers uh, Arabic. So uh, if you were familiar with Rosetta Stone, uh, it's a language software. Rosetta Stone teamed with the U.S. Army to make Arabic for 
for the U.S. Army to teach them Arabic uh, before they went off. And, and then also ongoing, you know, because we still have occupation there. Um, the language software, I was involved in being part of the segments where they would teach you the, the language. And uh, I played the Osama bin Laden style terrorist character that you would use the language within the software to capture. So uh, <laughs> I filmed for three months down in at North Carolina at a lovely place called Blackwater that is now no longer in existence. And a lot of people uh, know a lot about it. If you Google that, it's notorious. But uh, I had a lot of fun blowing shit up and being the, the main bad guy and jumping out of tanks and uh, yeah, some wild shit. I'll send y'all. There's some pictures if you really scroll back in my Facebook from some of the shoots there. But I uh, had fun. There's a terrorist poster made up of me. But yeah, you would uh, the army would utilize uh, this software to learn the language and try and capture me within the software. So that was fun because I got to blow shit up and have you know That's tight. all kind of crazy <laughs> shit. That's tight. <laughs> all right, I got I got one. I got I think I got one good one for you that I think you'll enjoy answering. All right, what uh. If you got to choose to be in an MCU movie that has a cameo, so not like an actual character, you just get a cameo, like Stan. Okay. What movie would it be, and what would you be doing? Ah, I, I, it's, it's very difficult, but I guess because it was my, my I stand him so long growing up, it would have to be Spider Man, Tom Holland, Spider Man. Mm -hmm. um and i guess being uh, a cousin to ned since he's filipino shout out to uh i forgot the actor's name i met him I met him at new york comic-con uh but uh jacob Batalon, jacob Batalon, from, from hawaii shout out to jacob and repping oh, hawaii oh, to the fullest uh jacob was a real cool cat but he plays ned Leeds, who's the homie to peter parker tom holland's character so i would be like the cousin to jacob to then fuck with uh peter parker that's good. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Like, I should actually be casting that. Like, he could have a Kuya. Yo, this is my Kuya P. You know what I'm saying? What up? What up, Parker? <laughs> Some bullshit. You <laughs> you know? Well, you hear it now, folks. You hear it now, folks. You Get him in. Get him in the movie. <laughs> Get him in the movie. <laughs> you got at least another three movies with him. Yeah. Hey, you know? You could do it. So, all right, man. We've reached our time in 20 minutes. We'll have to do another one of these again because sure. I know there's some more fire I want to throw at both of y'all. I really <laughs> want to get grimy. I want to get dirty. But uh, we'll do that throughout other shit. And I'm sure we'll find topics that'll explore that oh, and yeah. we'll get even more fun with it. But, y'all, but basically, yeah. I, I y'all are amazing, but and just by you know this the things we did just now opening up to each other that probably some of y'all didn't know about me about each other. Um, y'all are just cool cast, man. I love this your energy and your souls. So I'm looking forward to you know figuring out topics and turning nothing into something or whatever we do. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> what y'all want to say, man? This is episode zero, man. Yeah, We're gonna try I mean... and do this, I guess, like every other week. Yeah, what y'all think, man? At least we'll try for sure. I mean, I just want to thank you both for you know doing this because it's such an amazing time, especially with everything going on. To you know, make time, sit down with folk who you know either see eye to eye on certain things or even not, but just getting yeah. down and being able to talk and just really get to know people and put it on a platform where others can tune in and also enjoy what we're saying or try to see how we connect. Because I feel like with all of this going on right now. The one thing that most people are looking for is to feel connected. Yeah. And if they see three people who, you know, come from completely different backgrounds doing it, then I feel like it'd be good for other people to know, oh, I don't have to just stay within people that either have to look like me or think like me. I can find other, I can find my own community, you know? And that's what oh, I really yeah. hope to be accomplished with this. Absolutely. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm really excited about the future of this. Um, I really enjoy having conversations. And I think um, at this time in like the world, we lack um, the ability to have civil discourse. And I think that's something that this podcast will be able to do. And, you know, I think once, I think we could be a representation of how to listen and how to, you know, give a view and how to make both views work for everyone. Um, and I really think that this is a, uh, 
this is the mix and i'm really looking forward to uh more episodes and more shit talking with y'all Hell yeah. <laughs> dynamic trio y'all we gonna get it in from now uh going forward you ever just lose what you're about to say but you were already making- <laughs> <laughs> that was me right there. yes sir i echo all of that man y'all are just dope people man um uh tranquil i've known for for a minute and but rude man just your vibe and your energy and just like everything again you've even said against just solidifies even more i want to know more about you and just hear your words and your wisdom i love how you kind of you know you, like you said you know you kind of grew up without a father but just like the means and just your vibe and your energy that soul i love that spirit and that's what we all need to have especially with right now um we're all going through it we got but we got to stay positive man and uh, i just i'm really looking forward to what we're going to do with this and uh yeah, let's let's rock and roll this. Have fun with it, um, and because yeah, that, that, it's just it's gonna be great. And for everybody that's peeping this out right now, that don't know us from shit, and just kind of like all of a sudden checking this, man, let us know what y'all think, what you you like us to hear and talk about, and we'll try and give it to you as best as we can. And we might try to do it live as well, where we could get questions. I'm gonna look into that, um, see how we can kind of get that interaction going on as well. But we're just gonna vibe and just chill and give y'all us and and share our truths and uh i'm looking forward to it man and y'all are both amazing and i'm blessed to know y'all and again looking forward to when this shit comes away or the pandemic or whatever if 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 things change into a new normal or whatever to to like do this in person as well man it'll be dope but um this is this real cool man good times good vibes let's let them know how they can reach out to us outside of here individually and then it, we may form a new Twitter. I don't know. We'll, we'll have everything set up. But just yeah, let us know yeah. in the comments because this is going to get posted. Um, and, and we'll try and vibe. And we're just we're, we're steadily building this. And we'll, we'll all build this together. But individually, let them know how they can hit us up. Rue, hit them up. You can follow me on anywhere. That's not true. Maybe just Twitter and Instagram. <laughs> but I'm at both my ads are the same. Just at Rue Kage, R-O-O-H-K-A-G-E. So follow me. If you ever have any questions, feel free to DM. Uh, like I said, I'm an open book here. I'm an open book anywhere. Word. No. Um, yeah, uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, um, at Tranquil Ashes, at Tranquil Ashes across all platforms. Um, same as Rue. If you have any particular questions for me, even if it's not about what happened here, about something I do, cosplay, whatnot, hit me up. Um, I'll be more than happy to uh, answer those questions. Definitely. So I'm actually, as I've been doing this, as you can probably see as I've edited this by the time y'all seen this, it's on the screen. So there you go. It's right there. Check out my peoples, hit them up. And I'll also have it in the description as well. It's your boy, Kuya P from the Nerds of Color, NRW, Nerds of the World, um, holding it down with a show, pal show. You can follow me at Strange Since 1977. That's the Instagram, I think. And Twitter is at Temple Far East. I don't know because I'm old. I forget <laughs> shit. Um, here at the NRW and at New Release Wednesday where Nerds Rule the World and also at the Nerds of Color and that's Nerds of Color Everything um, where this is going to just get broadcast. I'm putting it up on all my shit because I want all these people that I'm working with, my girl Tranquil and my boy Rue, they're part of the family now, they're part of the squad. We're going to throw this up everywhere. Please let us know what y'all think, man. We're, just, we're giving this to y'all and if anything, it's just for us as well because to me, I find this is therapy. I don't know about y'all with everything sure. again, like we said, with what's going on in the world, you know, my boy, Rue, and which I appreciate you bringing up how amazing your therapist is. And when we were talking about, you know, people we look up to, it's real talk. You know what I'm saying? We're all going through it right now. So join our therapy session every other week because we're going to give it to y'all and we're going to have fun. That's what it is. Yeah. All right, y'all. We out of here. Uh, <laughs>